All right, guys, Brian with Vet Source here, checking in Friday night. Kind of got uh, relegated to the garage because the weather would not cooperate with me today. So I couldn't get started on our cleanup series, or underhood cleanup uh, series, or cleanup video in the series I'm doing on our tune port injection on the Formula 350. If you haven't seen that, I've got a link there at the top of the video for that. Uh, so what I decided to do tonight was we've talked a little bit about our other uh, project car, the 72 Corvette 454 LS5 car uh, that we brought in here a few weeks ago. And there's a link there at the top if you haven't seen that playlist for that car yet. But um, what I'm gonna do is I've talked a lot about the car and condition and assessing some other things. Haven't really focused on the motor very much. So I did go ahead, get the motor situated. It's off of its uh, trailer position. Uh, sitting here now on the stand, we got a special one ton engine stand for this because as you can see this is a pretty big motor right here um, now this is the same motor that's actually in this car here but you don't really get the scope and the size of a big block uh, looking at it down when it's installed in a car versus when it's actually out of the car so this is a monstrous piece of machinery uh, just about fully dressed almost 800 pounds with everything on it um, and uh, this was the powerhouse the boss of the streets back in the horsepower wars when they first started uh, in the 60s. Now the Corvettes ran big blocks for 10 years from 65 to 74. So 65 was a 396, 66 through 69 was a 427, and 70 through 74 was a 454. Now the interesting thing about Chevy big blocks is that they're all identically visually the same motors, the same casting. Uh, there's minor differences, plugs in the heads, things like this. Uh, different flash on the castings, but the blocks themselves are virtually identical um, Because all they did with them was increase uh, From the 396 to 427 they increased the bore size from 3.76 to 4.0 inches and then in the 70 454s they increased the stroke of the crank and left the bore size the same so Essentially they took the same block and just kept remachining it redoing it of course new engineering uh, drawings and things and new casting numbers so visually when you look at a big block Chevy you're not going to be able to tell internally what cubic inch size is unless you pull the heads off or if you do the casting number now this casting number on this one is a 3999289 which is what they used for 72 through 74 now what I'm going to do in this video primarily is kind of take a look at this motor closer than I did before and uh, give you a rundown of, of numbers matching and things like that. You hear that thrown around a lot with Corvettes, and I'll tell you exactly, I'll show you exactly what that means as far as when they're talking about numbers matching. So, of course, again, this is a 72 454. Um, the best part about it for me was that this motor is not locked up, it turns free, uh, even sitting outside looking as grungy as it is, it's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, visually, I can tell it's got most of its, if not all of its original components still on it. The thermostatic choke coil is still here. The oil uh, insert cap is in there. This looks like a later service replacement water pump. I can see a later 1982 date code, I think, on that. Or is that 92? I think it's 92. Uh, that's the bracket for our power steering pump. I'm sorry, the alternator with the power steering combination because without that, that's a different bracket. Uh, our original uh, harmonic balancer pulley for the big block. So lots of the original stuff, the cast iron intake. But the biggest thing people are looking at, of course, the Corvettes, um, and some of the other cars too, is that matching numbers moniker, which I'll show you why. In some cases, it doesn't really mean terribly a whole lot. So this one here is, again, you can see it right there. We get a 3999289, okay? Now, that in and of itself tells me this was originally built or cast as a 454. Now, the difference between the 454 and the 427 blocks, like an earlier 427 is a 3963512, does not have uh, clearances cut in the journals uh, to clearance, like this is a, this is a three, now this is actually a 351 block here. But these do not have clearances cut at the bottom of the cylinder bores to clearance that longer stroke of the crank. So these motors actually have little relief cut in the bottom where the piston would go so that the longer stroke will fit. And you know, these motors here, the 427s, 
and the 454 you can kind of see on this one here uh, these cylinders pistons are as big essentially about the size of a paint or a pint size quart paint can they're big they're huge I can actually fit my whole hand through there so it's amazing how big these things are um, and of course the scale so again we got a 289 block which tells us this was a 72 and and just so you know these casting numbers are essentially just engineering basically assigning them a casting number based on upgrades they've done over the running changes so this is just a way to identify for the factory this didn't start out as oh this Corvette's gonna have this and this for future collectability they didn't care about that at that point so you can see it's a 289 block which identifies our 454 over here what we've got is we've got an F an 8 and then a 72 and for some odd reason this is done with the font facing this way this one the fonts facing that way I'm not sure why they did that unless it's like a mirror image I don't know so that F would indicate F being the sixth uh, a letter in the alphabet that's the sixth month of the year so that would be a February I'm sorry February a June 8th 1972 so that's the casting date of the block this block was cast on June 8th which is good so far because that tells us that it's still falling in line with what we've known about the motor because um, the car was built in uh, late mid-June I think June 17th I think so the thing that identifies a car or a motor to a particular car outside of those two numbers there and of course that number on that back corner needs to precede the build date of the car if it doesn't then you know that the motor didn't come from that car but here's the thing that everybody's looking for on these and you can kind of see this here so if we come over here in that corner see that T right there and then there's an O six one zero so that would mean this was built in the Tonawanda factory or assembled I should say Tonawanda June 10th which is two days after the casting date which lines up well with what we're looking at and then over here you see that CSS right there that is the suffix code which assigns it to whatever car it's going into now remember this 454 these engines were used in trucks dump trucks passenger cars all kinds of stuff so there were literally hundreds of thousands of them built not hundreds of thousands but quite a few so in the Corvettes there were 3913 72 Corvettes that came with this engine this particular engine so that CSS what that tells us is the application it was for was for a Corvette you can see it really clearly right there now here over here you can see to that 12 s and it's pretty faint right here but that is the beginning of the VIN number derivative of this car and I can kind of see there's a 2 there's a 4 so I know that VIN number of the car starts at 24 as it's 24 oh something and some change so I know that this is the original motor to this car which is great because in Corvette world original motor always helps you out a lot of times you know now it's not a given because most big blocks didn't survive they weren't made to survive they were made to thrash the street be street warriors so it wasn't always a big deal but that's a really good thing to have that um, that piece this block is original now the other thing too is by 72 these were using just a cast iron intake so we've got a 626 3753 cast February 6th of 72 so again we've got really close casting numbers on these now NCRS which is the National Corvette Restorer Society will actually give you a six month window preceding the build date of a car as they consider correct for a motor if you don't have an original motor you can put a, an engine that was cast six months before the car was built and they'll consider that proper and correct for restoration purposes but you can see on an original motor here I've got <clears throat> A casting date of that block of June 8th and the intake is a June 6th and then this puppy was assembled on the Tonawanda engine assembly line on June 10th so we've only got two days between when the block was cast and when the engine was assembled to be put into a Corvette now I will say among some of the other cars I've um, dealt with in the past these much tighter build dates or build characteristics uh, dates between them are much more common than a wider range than that you'll see in some so I'm not saying to be suspicious 
of cars with wider build dates, but I'm just telling you that usually real cars have very similar or very close build dates on a lot of stuff. Now what I'm gonna do real quick while we're in here looking, we might as well go ahead and take a look underneath here and see what our casting number of our heads is. Because I would almost be willing to bet that our heads are original as well. So this will just actually add more into the inventory and the assessment of the car that we needed to conduct just to see where we're going to be at. So let me see so I don't hit my other car here. Here's what I'm going to do. Let me get that very carefully. Pry on this. Mm, that does not want to come off. That has been on there for a while. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's see if it'll come off without hurting anything. All right, there we go. Look at that. All right. Should not have done this in front of the other car. All right, so there's that valve cover off. You can see right there. And of course, lots of mice stuff and bug things in there. But there we go. There's our casting date of our heads. That is a May 10th of 72. Nice and gnarly looking in here, but honestly, the bolts still look pretty good. And where's my casting number for my head here? Where are you? There it is. And we got the three 999 241s, which matches up to our two fours. I'm sorry, yeah, 241s. So these would be oval horse, oval port, lower horsepower heads. Now, by 72, they had severely started to lower the horsepower on the Corvettes. Um, 66 through 69 was, actually 67 through 69 was the heyday of the horsepower wars for a lot of the manufacturers not just Chevrolet, so you have either 426 Hemi or 428 Boss motors, so the big blocks wars were going on, and uh, don't let anybody fool you, they may not be the fastest thing you see on the street anymore, but the sound of a big block, regardless of which manufacturer it was, I'm not going to get in the argument on which one's better because they're all cool, um, these would rumble, shake the earth as they drove by when you heard a big block you knew what you were listening to so um but by 72 71 is when they really started hitting hammer them on horsepower readings so by 71 you dropped to 365 horsepower in the big block corvettes and then on 72 what they did is they went all the way down to 270 horse with um with an eight and a half to one compression motor so these are really low low compression heads right here. Um, now, don't let that fool you. I mean, these still have tons of torque and lots of power to boot. So they're tons of fun. So let's take a look real quick here. Lots of trash in there as well. Bug stuff covering up everything. There we go. That is in E2372. And let's see here. And there's our 999-241 again. So, uh, filthy, like you wouldn't believe, but that's okay. It's actually all intact. It's going to all be cleaned up, so I'm not really terribly worried about it. Uh, just wanted to take a chance, take a moment to take a look at it. Since we had the chance, like I said, the weather was not going to cooperate with me. And what we'll probably do next time is I'll probably strip the intake off of it just to kind of see how bad things look down there. But... I'll be honest with you guys, internally, man, it still doesn't look that bad. And I think I remember them telling me that this motor had been rebuilt once before. So it's probably been, in fact, I know it's been through because it's been repainted a different color at some point. For some reason, they painted it black. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, so we got that out of the way. So our motor's good. Um, because again, on this car, what we're going to be doing is starting on the mechanical restoration first before we move on to the body and everything else. So this is a good place for us to start. So. Like I said, just wanted to force to bring you some stuff in here from the garage tonight since it was been raining like crazy on us. I will be back next week with more stuff on the formula as we continue to clean up that engine bay, get that thing going. But appreciate you sticking around, guys, and we'll check back with you next time. Thanks. See you then.